Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a meeting of Brant County Council for April the 25th, 2023. Attendance has been taken. We have a full council. Uh, Councillor Howes is zooming in. Uh, everyone else is here. Uh, second thing on the agenda is the approval of the agenda, noting that there's two new items of business, and we have one addendum which is going to be marked as 9.2. Oh, I'm sorry, and I have to say what the new items of business are. One is a letter that's been sent to me for support, uh, and the other is a notice of motion uh, from Councillor Garneau. Those are the two new uh, pieces of business. Um, Councillor McAlpine, you're going to... Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Council Chambers that the County of Brant Council agenda and addendum as amended be approved for April 25th, 2023. Thank you. Are there any other comments or concerns? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, declaration of pecuniary interest. Does anyone have any? Councillor Garneau. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, with regards to 7.2.5, those are the social services resolutions. So they are one of our clients, and 13.1, that's the in-camera planning and development committee report. Thank you. And the clerk's going to help me remember those when we get to them. Uh, moving on then to number four on the agenda, which is delegations, petitions, and presentations. We only have one. We have Brooke Hayward, and she's here to speak on Brant Municipal Enterprises. Brooke, usually we, we only give people 10 minutes, but if you feel the need to go beyond 10 minutes, we have a motion in the backdrop to extend your time. So we'll, we'll start off with the 10 minutes and see how we go from there. Thank you. Is the presentation up? Your 10 minutes has started. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to make sure council has the, are, do you have the presentation in front of you? Because I don't believe they do. So I'm just gonna, I'm giving a moment until it's up. Although I might as well go ahead. I'll, while, while you're waiting, I'll, I'll do an introduction. That's probably a good use of our time. How about that? So thank you for having me here tonight. My name is Brooke Hayward. I am the CEO of Brant Municipal Enterprise. And the purpose of tonight's meeting, it is a high level presentation that's intended to serve as a bit of an education session uh, for, for new counselors in particular but it's always great to get before our council as a whole. So what I intend to do today is just go over an overview on Brant Municipal Enterprise. And as soon as our presentation's up, I'll go ahead and get started. So I think we're just gonna give it a moment. I'm sure Gary's busy working in the background. I'm having some technical difficulties, I apologize. Okay, that's okay. I will, I can get started. You there just won't go. have, okay, great. So there we go. So Brant Municipal Enterprise um, is a wholly owned incorporation of the municipality of Brant. So you council is the, the sole shareholder of Brant Municipal Enterprise. And this is actually the 10 year anniversary of BME. We were incorporated on, in 2013 under the Municipal Act and we replaced the former Brant Kenny Power Services Company. So when the uh, municipality looked to sell off Brant Kenny Power, they had their services based companies. And under that service company, there was a renewable energy division and a fiber optic division. And when the utility sold off Brant Kenny Power, they rolled those service companies over under Brant Municipal Enterprise. And that was our first two business units was the fiber optic company and the renewable energy company. So BME did, I'm gonna to refer to it as BME going forward, Brant Municipal Enterprise assumed all business activities of the Brant Kenny Power Services Company. And BME is governed by a board of directors, so the mayor serves as our board chair. We have two municipal members as appointed by council and four private directors um, as well appointed by council. So we have a shareholders declaration. It speaks to how directors will be appointed. We have a recruitment committee. That recruitment committee is comprised of the municipal members of council and we recruit, we make recommendations, and they come before council. And one of the primary reasons we're here tonight is uh, for an education session because we come before council once a year 
after we get our audited financial statements, we come, it's usually around July or August for our annual shareholders report. So every year there's an annual shareholders report that comes to council, gives an overview on the financial statements, the business activities, a future outlook, everything that we feel council as a shareholder would need to know on the, the company to know how it's performing. And that, that report will be forthcoming this summer. But we do have some decision packages that will be coming up to council in the months leading up to that. So we wanted to get before you so you know who we are and what we do before you have to make some decisions on some business activities. So the objectives as approved by council, and I, I am going to read these because I think they're all important, is to collaborate with existing county departments to identify municipal assets that can be leveraged to create new sources of revenue, to guide the technical or operational initiatives required to maximize the value of these assets, to review the acquisition of new assets or enhancement of existing assets that will generate future earnings for the county, to identify new opportunities, investments, and relationships that will have positive business and social impacts for the county, to invest in business activities that can add value to the residents uh, while creating new sources of revenue for the county, and to act as a business resource for council and staff of the county. So these were the objectives as approved by council when we were incorporated. And again, there is a shareholder's declaration that speaks to these objectives. Uh, I'm going to move through and talk about some strategic planning initiatives that as a board um, are created every few years and the business plan that guides us as well. And just so the new council knows, we, we didn't want to inundate all of council with a bunch of background information because for a lot of the councillors, this is information that you have and have received before. But if there's any materials that you would like to have, um, these could include past uh, last year's annual shareholders report or the business plan, we're, we're happy to share those. So if there's anything that you feel would be valuable in advance of the annual shareholder report coming up in a few months, we're happy to circulate those. So County Council approved BME with the following mandate. Acting in a business-focused environment, Brant Municipal Enterprise will leverage existing and future municipal assets to grow existing revenues and to invest in new business ventures that create future earnings for the county. And every two years, uh, our board gets together. We have a strategic planning um, session, typically. It's ongoing. We usually get together a few times as it's developed. And we define the objectives for the organization. We define goals for each respective objective and then performance indicators that keep both, and this serves as a guiding principle. These objectives and, and goals are reviewed at each and every board meeting so that we can report on how we're performing as a company and to essentially create a roadmap for the organization. And again, these, these materials, um, happy to circulate. We're actually in a draft update of our strategic plan. We just worked through a new strategic planning update, which is included in the slide here. Um, it's been approved in principle. However, it will go to our next board meeting to be uh, officially approved by the, adopted by the board. So the intention as we move along here, I'm past most of um, some of the heavier materials that we would read through. And the intention is I want to show some examples of some of the objectives that we worked on and speak to each of our business units. So I'm just going to carry on here. Um, and again, so right now we have a business plan. Um, the business plan goes through to 2026, but some of the activities that we've uh, been working on within the company, they've changed over the years as they do, which is why we update the strategic plan every couple of years. And within one of the goals of, of our uh, strategic planning objective, it speaks to updating this plan. And the intention is to have the um, business plan updated by Q1 of 2024. So again, that will be forthcoming as well. So I'd like to speak to some of our business units. We had two primary business units originally when we were incorporated. We had our Renewable Energy Division and we had our Fiber Optic Division. And under the Renewable Energy Division specifically, the intention of that was to build turnkey green energy solutions for clients. Our client base, one of our biggest clients is the County of Brant. So it's working with the county to identify municipal assets that can be leveraged to create new revenue streams and to help build a more sustainable brand. Because I think, you know, that's something that 
council, all levels of government are starting to hear more about is, you know, the need to be carbon neutral, the need to be more sustainable. So Brant Renewable Energy acts as essentially a, a business arm to be able to deliver some of those solutions. And we are looking to bring a report to council. We'd like to help identify a roadmap, essentially, a, uh, maybe we'll call it a greening brand initiative or something to that nature to help create a framework to get council to their 2050 goal to be carbon neutral. So we would like to start identifying different projects that can help save, save on energy, help generate new sources of renewable energy, different things that can help offset our carbon footprint. So these are the types of things that can happen under the Renewable Energy Division. And I'm going to show some examples of some of the projects that we've done uh, throughout the county. Now, we don't just work with the municipality. We work with the business community as well. We work with um, some of our clients include Adidas, BGI Retail, Six Nations is one of our largest clients, and we've done a lot of uh, public-private pr partnerships, joint venture agreements for some of these renewable projects we're going to look at. And uh, Brant Renewable Energy, has they have a proven track record. They've been providing turnkey energy solutions to the community for close to 14 years now. After the uh, Green Energy Act came out in 2009, they were incorporated as a division of Brant County Power, and they continue to serve this critical uh, service to the county. So I want to show you some examples, some projects you'll recognize to help, uh, you know, bring a bit of context to the types of things that we do. So this is Brant Sports Complex, and back in 2008, um, actually it may have been a little earlier than that, uh, no, sorry, a little later than that, or uh, 2012, I believe that it was, Brant Renewable Energy worked to help put together a package of uh, projects, and we, we went to the government. They had a feed-in tariff program at that time, and you could apply for um, long-term grants to, or long-term contracts to generate en energy. So you, we, we applied, we put together all of the various partnerships to help position these applications for approval, and a lot of them were on municipal assets. So essentially, energy is generated, clean energy is generated on the rooftops of, of the arenas throughout the county, and they create long-term revenue streams. So the revenue flows in, it's a bit of a silent, uh, almost like tenant that's on the roof of the arenas, and they create new sources of revenue from an asset that otherwise would have been under, underutilized. The, the roofs of arenas can't be used for much other than things like this. So it was a great use of that space. Um, this is the Burford Arena. I'm just gonna go through a couple of the different facilities that may be speak to the different councillors in their jurisdiction. This is the uh, St. George Arena. And these are some projects that are all in partnership with Adidas. So, uh, sorry, in partnership with Six Nations, one of which is Adidas. But uh, back when the 403 Brant Business Park Accommodation Charter was put together to help accommodate the Six Nations community, uh, within that, there was a number of objectives that would be um, that the county brand agreed to take on. And one of those would be to encourage a lot of the businesses in the Brant Business Park to invest in clean energy. So Brant Renewable Energy worked to help structure contracts with the government between the municipality, the private sector business, and the Six Nations community to acquire these renewable energy contracts and their 20-year contracts with the government. And again, they, they provide sources of revenue for the municipality and the business community and the Six Nations community, which are great joint venture projects that provide a lot of value, social value as well, uh, to partnering with the business community and our Six Nations neighbors. A couple of these projects, actually, the one in the bottom left corner, that one's out at Six Nations, and it's the Oneida Business Park. Uh, so Six Nations came to us as well, and they had some projects that they wanted us to partner on. So we partnered uh, on a project with them. And the top left-hand corner is um, the Six Nations Polytechnic Campus in Brantford. So uh, Brant Renewable Energy went in and helped to make that facility completely net zero. So we worked with them to acquire uh, grants from the government, and we put 400 kilowatts of solar on the roof. We completely retrofitted the inside of the building to be um, to convert to LED lights and a number of different energy savings measures to make the facility electricity net zero. Excuse me, Brooke. Yes. I'm looking for a motion from Councillor Bell to extend your 10 minutes. I have a seconder in Councillor Pierce. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. I should have done it at the beginning. Thanks, Brooke. Thank you. 
And just to flash through to, to show the, the value the brand renewable energy brings, and again, it's more than just creating new sources of revenue. It's also about the strategic joint venture partnerships that we create. So this is going back close to 10 years ago, but it's some ribbon cutting events with the Six Nations community out for this one in particular is the Oneida Business Park. These ones here are up in the Brant Business Park. Uh, again, joint venture partnerships with the municipalities, the Six Nations community, and the private sector businesses that are up there. And then as well, so we spoke about a lot of energy generation projects, but these ones are getting to be a little bit more recent. They're ones that are either ongoing now or just recently completed, and they're off-grid solar lighting projects. Um, the one to the, to the right there is the bridge uh, going over into Lions Park. We recently helped the County of Brant to put an off-grid lighting solution there to light that bridge up, and there's battery storage and there's solar there to help create a more safe and aesthetically pleasing uh, solution to light that bridge up and be completely off-grid so it's not consuming any energy once you uh, um, put the upfront cost to put this in and there's no more costs on that uh, moving forward over the life of the system. And then the one on the left is an off-grid uh, street lighting solution. So in instances where it can be challenging or really costly to put in all of the infrastructure for street lighting, off-grid uh, solar lighting is an excellent solution that we're looking at in some of the communities throughout the County of Brant. So I'd like to give an example. Um, we're, we are a business, so we're always taking a look at our business units and identifying, are we still providing value? Have, are we still meeting our objectives? Or have we met our objectives for the organization? And one instance of this is our telecommunication business unit. So when we first incorporated 10 years ago, uh, Brant Municipal Enterprise had a couple pieces of fiber optic uh, that went up into the business parks. And the intention of, of building that fiber optic network at the time was to help service the business park and bring industry here, who otherwise would really struggle to get here without high-speed telecommunication. Because 10 years ago, there wasn't a lot of it going into the rural areas. And I think if you live in the rural areas, you may say there's still not a lot of it right now. Um, so what we did was we, we built the backbone to get into a lot of the business parks and provide high-speed telecommunication to help create industry and economic development in our community. But a couple years ago, when new private sector businesses were starting to come in, like other service providers, they were also starting to provide that service and essentially in many ways overbuilding us. So we had done it and further to that, the province has committed to ensure that all residents within Ontario, and maybe it was even, maybe it was federal, it could have been Canada, would be connected to high-speed telecommunication within the next couple of years. So as a board, we identified that this fiber optic business is likely more valuable now than it will be in the future when other industry is here. And furthermore, with Brant Municipal Enterprise, we don't want to be competing with the private sector. Our intention is to fill gaps, like help to fill gaps that otherwise exist. So when we identified there was a lot of other private sector business delivering these services, we made a decision to sell off the fiber optic company, which was sold a little over a year ago. And now we're looking at deploying those funds into other areas that are gaps. Uh, an example of that is now our new arm, our development arm, that recently oversaw the development and the eventual ownership of the health hub. So when there was a, an identified need to help create a health hub type facility that would be a mix of both private sector businesses, not-for-profit agencies, government agencies, it was an area where the private sector wouldn't have necessarily delivered the solution the way that we could because it's difficult to provide space to not-for-profit agencies when you're a private sector business. So we created a solution within, on behalf of the county, the council approved for this uh, to be built because we created a business case that made it completely cost neutral to the taxpayers of the county of Brant. So the revenues coming in combined with the fundraising that we did will help to carry the cost of the asset through the entire life of, of the asset. So it was a really creative solution to deliver critical services that were needed at a critical time without burdening the tax base. So that's the type of activity that we're doing in the development business unit now, is creating uh, real estate projects, build suit real estate projects that fill gaps in our community. Other examples that we may be looking at into the future could be 
affordable housing projects. That's something that we often talk about. Of course, it's important to remember BME is the private sector arm of the municipality. We are not funded by the tax base. All the revenues that we generate have to provide all the services that, and, and overhead costs of, of running the company. So we can't invest in things that lose money. They have to at least be cost neutral. Ideally, they would generate some revenues. Um, we always say we're not just here to generate revenues. We're here to provide value to the community as well. So th those are always equations we're looking at. But when we start to talk about other build to suit uh, real estate projects, you know, maybe we look at other parts of the county that may need other medical type facilities in the future. Or maybe it is affordable housing projects with maybe a commercial component and some housing. You know, we really look to think strategically at filling some of the needs and addressing some of the concerns we have in the county of Brant and look at it from a creative, through a creative business lens. Um, there's a lot of grants out there for various things, particularly right now in the renewable energy sector, all levels of government are really putting money towards sustainable initiatives. You'll hear it from the federal government, the provincial government. So we're working right now to be prepared and positioned to go after those grants. That's something we do. We're really, we have a proven track record of being really good at acquiring contracts and grants to make these projects happen and to help come up with creative ways to introduce new infrastructure projects to the County of Brant um, that may otherwise be a bit challenging just in the traditional municipal environment. A couple projects here, another ribbon cutting ceremony at the Health Hub here just last year. And just a couple summary slides then. So some of the benefits of Brant Municipal Enterprise. To generate revenues for the shareholder outside of the traditional tax base, to reduce energy costs through conservation initiatives, to develop strategic partnerships, to create local green jobs, to build a sustainable net zero municipality, we're looking at implementation of smart city infrastructure, and to develop real estate initiatives that help fill community gaps. Over the years, we've had a number of awards and recognitions. There's a summary here, and again, these, I don't necessarily need to, to go through all of them, but we have received a lot of industry recognition for the creative work that we do. And also, you know, we, we often say, 10 years ago, there was a few municipalities that had municipal corporations, and we were going to them saying, tell us how you did it, you know? And now we have people coming to us saying, tell us how you did it. How are you introducing these types of things throughout your municipality during a time when I think we all know there's budgetary constraints for municipalities right now. I think all municipalities were recently faced with a, diff a difficult budget period. So having an organization like like BME is a creative way to help continue to do the things we need to do in the county, continue to provide value to the community and you know different initiatives that the, the residents and your constituents want to see with hopefully not burdening the tax base, looking at it from a, through a different creative lens. That's what we're here to do. Um, so future outlook, to continue to work closely with the shareholder, you the shareholder, to identify new business opportunities that add value filling community gaps to focus on new business ventures with reliable long-term term revenues. Example of that, we didn't get into all of it, would be um, the government's coming out with new battery storage initiatives where you could use your brownfield sites to help put in battery storage with long-term contracts to help create new revenue streams. There'll be a lot of different things that we're gonna be looking at, a lot of different exciting new opportunities that we can bring to, to the shareholder when the timing is right. And that leads into the next one, exploring new uh, opportunities in the green energy space. And to aid the municipality in their goal to become a sustainable, carbon neutral county of brand. And that is the overview. So if I could, can I open it up for questions? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Great. Does anyone have any questions for Brooke? Am I going to get off easy here okay. tonight? Now, Councillor Miller, you're first, please. <laughs> And I, I do notice Councillor House has his hand up on the oh. screen there too. Um, so through you to, to Brooke, Brooke, um, did you fill those two direct positions that you were um, posting in March? So through the chair to Councillor Miller, 
um, so we did, we, we hired a new director of energy, yes, uh, a little over a year ago, and he runs now the renewable energy division, and we, our renewable energy division is really exploding right now. We have a lot of opportunities from both the, the public sector and the private sector, um, and so much so that we saw the opportunity and the need to bring on somebody new. So we recently posted another position, a support position for our director of energy. It's a, a part-time for now position coming in. It's a contract position that was recently filled and they start on Monday. Okay. So yes, we did fill our two positions. There, there was two vacancies on the board of directors. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you meant staff. So through the ch chair to you, um, we're right in, we had, we're in the process right now of bringing recommendations to council that will be forthcoming. We suspect it will be likely May, the May council meeting. And in fact, that's one of the reasons we wanted to get before you um, to give an overview to the new councillors before you start having some recommendations come before you. So yes, we are in the process of filling those two positions. At the end of the day, council has to appoint the positions. We bring recommendations forward. So those recommendations will come forward to you likely at your next council meeting. Okay. okay. Um, is there a term limit for a board, for a director of the board? Through the chair to, to Councilor Miller, yes, there is. Two four-year terms is the max. All right. And last question. Well, maybe. Um, do you, do you pay uh, a director? Does Pro Grant Municipal Enterprises pay a stipend or, or Through anything? the chair to you, private directors are paid. Okay. The municipal members are not. Yeah. And um, I, I, I think that's a good thing because I think you, the difference between a little bit of pay and no pay and the quality of the people that come out is night and day. So, yeah, I support that. So Okay, thank you, Brooke, and uh, good job on the uh, Cowan Health Hub. I think everybody here knows you did a great job, but well, you should be told. Definitely, this. thank you. Group effort on that one. It was a it was a big project. But thank you, Councillor. How is your next? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Brooke, uh, and I was going to echo uh, the comment about uh, uh, Brand Municipal Enterprises is is an overall success story, but especially the Health Hub was an incredible success story. So. Um, and Councillor Miller kind of beat me to that one. But I, I wanted, Brooke, I wanted to ask a little bit about the, I was happy to hear you mention affordable housing as a, as a possible uh, project in the future. And, and I was, I noted that early in your presentation, you referenced uh, business or social impacts to our community. And, and I, I see opportunities there. One, one thing I wanted to try and clarify is I don't think council sets your priorities and if, if you could speak to that a little bit and, and and also speak to like if if there's a potential for brant municipal enterprises to assist our community in the affordable housing category in the future what would be the steps that would have to happen for that to become a priority through the chair to Councillor House. So Council did, in fact, through a shareholder's declaration, uh, designate objectives for the organization. So we do work within those objectives when we structure our strategic plan. Um, and then within those objectives, it says that we'll work with, with the shareholder and work with staff um, to help identify needs within the community. If, if we were to enter into, let's say, a new business venture outside of the objective, so to speak, it's quite, it is quite broad, actually. It does allow us to enter into different types of business activities. However, if we start to branch into anything new, we would, or dispose of anything, we do have to come to the shareholder for approval. Um, so we're always working very closely with the shareholder. We're listening intently. We're reading your strategic plan, we're engaging with staff, we're engaging with council to help identify the needs, essentially. So we have been a talk, I know affordable housing is something you've been hearing about from us for a couple of years. And um, what we continue to do is look for opportunities where we can help, you know, provide those types of services 
th those types of real estate projects, I guess we'll call them, without them, we can't enter into things that lose money, right? So we're always looking at them to try to come up with creative ways, um, like looking, we're always analyzing grants to see what type of grants are out there to help us bring these to market. Um, there's going to be another report from forthcoming from working uh, with a new CAO um, to identify surplus county lands or vacant county lands to leverage those for projects like this and help to come up with, again, creative ways to approach these projects. Um, and maybe there does have to be a commercial component, similar, similarly actually to what we did with the health hub. You know, there's not-for-profit space. There's space within that facility to provide space to groups that otherwise couldn't afford full commercial rents, but those were offsetted, offset by for-profit agencies that could pay co commercial rents and also a fundraising component. So those are the ways that we're going to be looking at introducing these types of things. We have to really approach them creatively and come up with ways of helping, of creating different sources of revenue and or grants to ensure that we can create a model that is at minimum cost neutral. Thank you. Any other questions for Brooke? Seeing none, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your, your hard work and your leadership. It's a success story and uh, glad to be part of it. So thank you. Great, thank you. Um, what are we going to do with the president? Councillor Bell. Yeah, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Pierce, that the delegation from Brooke Haywood, CEO of Brant Municipal Enterprises, be received as information. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried? Which takes us to number five on the agenda, which is the minutes from the previous meeting. Councillor Miller, I believe you have those. Yeah, yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, moved by myself, second by Councillor Oakley. At the County of Brant Council minutes of March 28th, 2023 be approved. Any concerns on the minutes? 5.1 on the, seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. Is there any business arising from the minutes? Keep an eye on Councillor Howes there for me, Ms. Madam Clerk. Thank you. Uh, moving on then to number 7.1 on the agenda um, is consent items to be approved, and I believe Councillor Garneau has that. Thank you. So uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Kyle, that the County of Brant supports local action by the Brant County Health Unit to reduce the risk of West Nile virus. As a result, the County of Brant authorizes any permit application for West Nile virus control submitted to the Ministry of Environment from an appropriately licensed exterminator to apply a larvicide to catch basins and surface waters located within the county of Brant. Everyone's clear. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried? Um, consent items to be received. Councillor Garneau, you're in conflict. Is that right? I'm sorry? One item five. five. Okay. Uh, Councillor Oakley, you have that, 7.2. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Miller that consent item 7.2.1 to 7.2.8 be received as information. Councillor Pierce. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I could, I've got uh, a couple of questions on a few of them, if I could. Okay. Um, okay. Which ones? 2.2, uh, 2.4, and 2.7. Okay. Then we'll, we'll vote on one three and six and eight. There's no questions. All those in favor? Opposed and carried. Uh, then we'll go back to two for you. Long point. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 7.2.2 is just actually a, a comment. It was a, it's a, a pretty, there's a lot of information in this, in this package. And, and I thought it was, it was kind of neat. A couple of couple things I just want to point out the fact that um, we're always talking about planting trees. And it says that they planted 72,285 trees throughout the watershed, and that's 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 a lot. That's that's you know kudos to them for for doing that. I know there's a lot of folks that always talk about are we replanting? Are they replanting? Well, there's the there's the stats right there. 
Um, and the other page that I want to just point out, if I could, is on page 29 of our package when it talks about facts and figures. Again, it's just a just a comment that you know a lot of people don't understand, you know how how much Long Point authorities and Grand River Conservation Authority does as well. But it, it just uh, you know the number of of acres, like over 11,000 acres, and, and it, it, there's really a lot of a lot of unique information in there. And I just I just wanted to just point that out that you know if people have a few minutes to read it. There's a, there's a lot of interesting information in there about that. So that's 7.2.2 if I could, and then if I could go to page 104 in our packages, which is 7.2.4. Bear with me, and I'll get there. Uh, page 104. Uh, I've got it. I've got it as page 95. It's the Corporation of Municipality of Calvin. Uh, nope, just bear with me, sorry. Uh, it's for 7.2.4, 7 which is in my package, it's on page 104 is where I want to talk about. Um, my apologies here. Um, when it talks about, uh, it, it's talking about the projected for child care, the projected child care spaces in schools. When it talks about North Brantford High School, is that North Park? Does no. anybody know? No. No, I, I understand that. I'm just. Uh, I, I think you're talking about 7.2.5. Uh, I thought it was 7.2.4. My apologies. Through social services. Is that 0. 0.5? No. Yes. My apologies. I'll, I'll ask that question elsewhere then. So 7.2.4, did you want to, you wanted to speak to that? That's the Corporation and Municipality of Calvin? No, my apologies, Mr. Mayor. I was on 7.2.5. That was my mistake. Okay, we're there now. So no, we, already now voted, we already voted on 7.2.5. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. I, I, Councillor Garno has a, has a conflict, so we haven't voted on it yet. Okay, so as I was saying... Um, <laughs> Is, is, can somebody confirm, is that North Park, North Brantford? Is that considered North Park School? Does anybody know? I don't, I wouldn't have said it was North Park School. Does anyone know for sure? Because I've never, I've never heard of that. Well, the North, North End of Brantford would be North Park School. Yeah, I, I'm just curious as to why it wouldn't be called North Park Collegiate, that's all. Anyway, I can, I'll, I'll find okay. out. I just wondered if somebody here knew that. Okay. And then uh, 7.2.7, 7, Mr. Mayor, it's on page 194. Yep. Um, and it's the it's to do with the AORs. Um, again, a lot of information there that I, I don't think a lot of people know about the chargebacks from um, Enbridge and other telcos and stuff like that. Again, I think it's uh, um, something that's good information for everybody to be aware of. So those that uh, take the time to, to read our council package, they might want to read the, the report on AORs on 7.2.7. 7. Thank you. Thank you. And the clerk's going to reach out to the clerk of the city of Brantford just to clarify that school. Appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. So, so what we have to vote on now is two, four, five, and seven. Councillor Chambers. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I, I'm just wondering, would, could I make a comment on uh, what uh, Councillor Pierce uh, said about planting the trees in the Long Point watershed? Yeah. And uh, if, if People get a chance that they should drive through the countryside, uh, particularly in the western part of the county, uh, before the leaves come on the trees, and you can see uh, the the effects of what the emerald ash borer has done. The mature trees are now starting to fall, and if you look into the woods, uh, you can see uh, dead uh, ash trees all over the place now, laying on the ground, and it, it actually looks quite ugly, and uh, in some of the areas in the western part, and I suspect maybe in the other parts as well, up to 40% of the woodlots are ash trees and they're all starting to fall over now. So it is important to replant trees and I, I hope we uh, are gaining on trees rather than losing trees, but uh, the ash trees are, are very visible now if you want to take a look at the uh, devastation of what an ash borer can do. Thank you. Um, any other comments on two, four, seven, or five? Councillor McAlpine. Uh, when John was speaking, I think he, about the ORs um, and the CN, I was just wondering if we should add a, 
consideration on our council to uh, back what they're saying because there is a lot of costs. We have a lot of uh, CN rails going through our community and costs for drainage and I think there is um, some costs to the county. Maybe uh, we, we could do that. Does anyone want to speak to that? Mr. Walton. I'm sorry, I didn't listen to the first part of the question, so I was working on something else. Well, it wasn't very clear. No, I'm just saying the errors, they made a comment about the extra costs to drainage on the CN that we're going to be downloaded to the municipalities and the, just the costs of $200 to go out and um, for costs and stuff. I'm just wondering if we should be backing this comment. This letter, yeah, Th through the mayor to um, uh, Councillor McAlpine. Uh, certainly, any backing w would be helpful, but I, I can guarantee you that um, um, OGRA and AORs are already working on this on behalf of all of us. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether they get um, you know 100 letters or 300 letters, I'm not sure it's going to make any difference. It's the, those people going to the meetings with them and pointing out all the things that are going on. At the OGRA um, last week, I was at the um, meeting of the what we'll call the county engineers on Tuesday morning and, and this was talked about at that and the OGRE is taking some action okay. as well as AORS. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Concerns? No. Okay, so, so what we'll do then is we'll, we'll vote on number five first separately uh, without Councillor Garneau. All those in favor? Number five. And we'll invite Councillor Garneau to come back to the table to vote on two, four, and seven. We're all here. Any concerns on two, four, or seven? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. That takes us for consent items to be received. Committee reports. The first one we have is Councillor Chambers, 8.1. Any questions for Councillor Chambers? Yeah. Councillor Bell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I, I, I will move. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, and Councillor McAlpine seconds the uh, Planning and Development Committee report of April 4th. Thank you. Now, Councillor Bell. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through you, I'd like to uh, just comment on item number two, which is about uh, Maple Avenue. And I do that in the context of now having read the latest update to the official plan. And, and it, it kind of raises concerns in my mind. I don't know whether it would raise concerns in the mind of the applicant. Uh, but item 10 on the uh, addendum report from, uh, from uh, the consultant that did the MCR is it, it, quite interesting. He says that... Um, Burford is anticipated to increase in the latter part of the 2051 planning horizon, i.e. post-2036, as servicing improvements may provide opportunities for large-scale development. In the short and medium-term planning horizon, growth in Burford represents a very small share of the county's growth and is confined to the built-up areas of Burford until the availability of full water and waste servicing. My, my question and concern is, is the applicant aware of that time frame that he might be waiting for 2036 before we are in a reasonable position to check, remove the H um, provision? Sorry. Was that question directed to me? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I can a attempt an answer at that. I, I think during the planning committee meeting, you'll recall that uh, it was mentioned by myself and perhaps some of the other members of the committee at that time that uh, there were no uh, uh, guarantees uh, of uh, servicing in Burford for the uh, near future or perhaps the distant future. And it, it was mentioned at the meeting. So I believe they would be aware of the... Uh, uh, what may be or may not be, I, I think they would be uh, uh, up to date on our official plan as well. So I think they know and they're not expecting uh, immediate servicing in Burford. 
Yeah, no. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, if I may, just my comment uh, through you to Councillor James is that this was, this came after the uh, the discussion, but I just wanted to make sure it's clear in everybody's minds. Thank you. Yeah. Dan, Dan and Matt are online if you want to hear it from staff. Do you, do you want us to bring in staff? For your question, Councillor Bell? No, I think if, if, if we're comfortable that the applicant understands his position, I wouldn't like to see him come back in two years' time and ask for something in the uh, failed understanding of this particular element. Councillor Miller, you're next. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and I know we're approving the uh, recommendations, but the minutes of the meeting themselves, I wonder if we could just make a correction before the next planning committee. Because Where's the correction? It's uh, page 201 of our package, page 5 of the minutes, and this is perhaps to the clerk, and it's it's also um, the Maple Ave one, item 9.1, and I just would like this last name of the second member of the public uh, corrected. Mr. Leach? Yes. To What do you want to change to? I want his last name spelled correctly. And what is that? L-E-A-C-H? L-E-I-T-C-H. I? Okay. Duly noted. Thank you. Are there any other corrections? Any other comments? Okay. Call the vote. All those in favor to accept the report with the correction of Mr. Leach's name. Opposed? And carried. Takes us to 8.2, Grants Committee Report. Councillor Coleman, you have this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving by myself, second by Councillor Pierce, that the Grants Committee Report of April 11, 2023 be approved. Comments? Comments? Councillor Oakley? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just as a point of clarification on four, um, I was under the impression that you yourself, Mr. Mayor, was on this uh, committee. Is that an implied part of an ad hoc committee, or should you be noted in there? Or were you not a part of it? I am part of it. Okay. It, it should be there, I guess. Um, okay. I just noticed that, but, yeah. But it just I has am. the five councillors listed. That's right. Sorry. Yourself, so. Any other questions or comments, concerns about the grants as they sit and as they read? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. <clears throat> Administration and Operations Committee. Councillor Pierce, you have this. I do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Howes that the Administration and Operations Committee report of April the 11th be approved, noting that there is a whopping 16 recommendations. Yeah. Questions for Councillor Pierce on his report? Seeing none, all those in favor to accept the report? Opposed? And carried. The wrong one. Nine point one, which is a staff report. Questions about OPS dash F. I'm sorry, RFT 23-15, Hillside Avenue, Ray South. Councilor Pierce. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. I just want to just confirm, and it was on page 236 of our report, it mentions sidewalks. Okay, and and you know what, maybe, maybe I should get a motion to get down the floor first. Sure. Councilor Pierce, that's you? Uh, Looking for a I, seconder? I don't have it. But no, I no, it's it. not anywhere. Sure. It's in my head. <laughs> Councillor Oakley, you're the seconder, and now we're going to discuss it. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. On page 236, at, um, the second paragraph, it talks about um, the plan for resurfacing will also include new side blocks. Does that mean, like, multiple blocks, or does that mean both sides, or...? Mr. Walton. Through the Mayor to Councillor Pierce, um, at the public information center they had, they, they laid out where the sidewalks are to be built, and there's, it's generally one side of the road, right. um, and throughout the, the area they're reconstructing. Okay, so it, that's, that's, that's confirmation. I just I took the sidewalks as the mention of both sides of the road, and it's just one side of the road. That was my understanding. I think mostly it's one side of the road. I'm not going to guarantee there isn't some small section where it's both sides of the road, but generally it's one side of the road. Thank you. Councillor Miller and then Councillor Bell. 
thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, maybe through you to, to Rob. Um, and this question could apply to 9.3 and 9.4 as well. There's there's a lot of work to be done, um, a lot of ripping up going on. Of, and my question is, um, is there any additional infrastructure that could go in? And, and I think back to Laurel Street when it was completely redone from side to side. And then I find out afterwards they don't have natural gas down there, and that would have been a perfect time to put a pipeline. But um, I'm, I'm thinking natural gas. I'm thinking uh, maybe fiber optics. Is there anybody that's looked at that that maybe we should be looking at additional infrastructure while these streets are ripped up? Mr. Walton. Through the, through the mayor to Councillor Miller, um, we generally have utility coordinating committee meetings with um, the other utilities being, you know, broadband and uh, telecommunications and gas and, and uh, hydroelectricity at the same time. Um, so generally, that's, that's the route that we go. You know, a place like uh, Laurel Street, we're not the provider of natural gas. We're not the ones to put, put those pipes down. They were warned of the, that project. Um, generally, though, the good thing is for a project like that is um, there's a small number of users down there, and if they when they come down there, they would bore their their utilities in. So, um, for the example of, of Laurel Street, um, I don't know the specific answer on these projects as to what what the comments were as to whether it's like I'm assuming the streets within Paris actually already have gas. Would be my assumption. I, I've never heard that they didn't. So, I was up for an answer. <laughs> Always be careful of assumptions, right? So, um, all I ask, maybe Mr. Mayor through to Rob, is um, just keep your eyes and ears open because, yeah, obviously it would make sense to put it in while it's there. And I understand, yeah, we're not in the natural gas business, but I, I know I'm sure somebody at Enbridge would have would have loved to take advantage of that Laurel Street situation. So, just I don't want to miss it on my watch. So, just like I say, keep your eyes and ears open if, if there's an opportunity. Response. Yeah, Councillor Bell. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Rob. Uh, Rob, you had a public meeting uh, on this this matter. Um, my understanding is that not everybody in these two roads is keen to have sidewalks. Do you have a sense of what proportion of the people want this and what proportion don't? Um, through the, through the mayor to Councillor Bell. Um, no, I wasn't actually at the the public information center, so I, I don't know. Um, early on, um, <clears throat> a year or so ago, when people knew we were out there serving, we had some people come forward. So we know there's some number of people that are against sidewalks. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it's, a, I don't think it's a, an overwhelming majority, but what we're doing is we're implementing council's um, wish, which is to have sidewalks, um, more or less throughout uh, the reconstructed streets that we do. So, uh, taking that uh, comment, uh, if I may, Mr. Mayor, do we, uh, have we taken the, the community input on which side of the street the sidewalk should go? Um, I, actually, in this case, I don't know the answer to that, but I know that we did put forward a plan which we looked at the reasons why it should go in certain areas. And I know there's one section in this one we're going to leave a small section of sidewalk out until the next street gets built. I know that that got talked about at the meeting and we're going to, we're going to implement that. It's only maybe 50 meters or something like that. It doesn't make a lot of sense to have it right now until the, the next street in this area of streets gets done. Um, so, um, but I don't think a lot of changes were made. Um, well, I would, if I may, Mr. I would appreciate an answer if you could let me, let me know after the meeting okay. or some point. I think it, just as a general point, I think if we have public information meetings, then I think we need to be, in this kind of report, we need to, to put in what do we hear and how have we responded to it, because it, it just says a meeting was held. And I know for sure uh, there are quite a few residents who will be very upset about this, as, as do many of my colleagues around the table. So I think it's, it's important that if we're asking them a question, asking them for input, that we feed back and we say why we either accept the input or we move on to a different solution. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bell. Any other comments to the staff report? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor to receive it? Opposed? And carried. Um, we're going to 9.2. I'm going to look for a mover. Councillor Coleman and a seconder. 
Councillor Miller is on the floor. This is the um, Van Zickel Bridge deck replacement. Are there any questions to staff regarding this report? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried? Which takes us to 9.1. No, 9.3, sorry. No. It's a typo, it's not the mayor. 9.3. Uh, uh, Grand River Street North Reconstruction. I'm looking for a mover to get it on the table. And I have it in Councillor Oakley, and a seconder by Councillor Howes. It's on the floor for discussion. Is there any questions to staff regarding Grand River Street North and the reconstruction. Councillor Bell, you're first. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you to Rob. Uh, could you give us a timeline on this, Rob, so that we can be clear when constituents ask us the question, you know, how long is this road going to be out of service? Mr. Walton. Through, through, through to the Mayor, to um, Councillor Bell. Um, we don't have the date for the start yet. We haven't awarded the contract yet, so we haven't had the meeting with the, the contractor. We will get that, and we will um, give you uh, that information once we get to the actual schedule from them. But this road's going to be closed in parts all summer, like two full traffic. Like we're, we're going to maintain traffic as much as we can, but there will be um, implications to traffic all summer. Any other questions or concerns? I'll be leaving my forwarding address in Dundas for, for all of you that are looking to get a hold of me during that time period. Uh, uh, any other comments, questions to Mr. Walton? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed and carried, which takes us down to um, Dundas Street West, Chapel Street, uh, Main Street, Trunk, Water Main Replacement, and Road Work. I'm looking for somebody to get down the floor. Councillor Coleman again and Councillor Bell. Any questions to staff regarding Ch um, Chapel Street or Dundas Street West? Councillor Bell. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Same question as for 9-2. Sorry, 9-3. Timeline, Rob, if I may. Through, through the Mayor to Councillor Bell, same answer. <laughs> Probably not all summer, but most of it. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Could I, maybe I could add some of that. Actually, going back to the Grand River Street North one, um, one thing, the way we've set this project up and doing a lot of this utility work this year, it actually will, when we then do the road works and the roundabouts in the future phases, it will really help those out to make them slicker because we won't be doing the deep work, right? Like this, this sewer we're doing up there is like six meters deep or 20 feet deep most of the way up to from the pumping station to Hartley. So it's a very invasive project and... Um, the way we've um, designed it with keeping it off to the one side of the road will allow us to keep traffic flowing somewhat. Not not great, but but somewhat um, um, all summer. So we're planning this in a way to, um, although this is a very invasive and a big project that, you know, and it will take a few years, we're, we're thinking about the public when we're doing it. And, you know, when it's done, you know, we're going to have a corridor up there, that, like is what we see at Rest Acres now, which now flows traffic very well and um, you know that's that's the goal so that short-term pain for the long-term gain is what, what we're um, what we're working on here any other questions for rob see none call the vote all those in favor opposed carried which takes us to number 10 on the agenda which is communications we have none resolutions and notices of motion we have none uh, and we have we have one we have new business other business and uh, I'll start with my letter that I received there was a copy of it on your desk asking for support um, Councillor Chambers make a motion looking for a seconder Councillor Miller uh, any questions to the letter it was directed to the mayor and I just thought I shouldn't respond without passing it by council Councillor Miller yeah, um, just to be clear, um, are they, um, sorry, a letter of support for exploring that. Um, I didn't, 
What was I didn't know if it was just the mayor or was it the uh, the municipality that? Uh, well, it was my support they were asking for, but I didn't think that I should speak on behalf of the entire council. Okay. I thought I would take it to you and see how you feel as a council, council chambers. In that way, the, the recommendation would be that we authorize the mayor to uh, correspond. With Absolutely. Me. So it's on the floor. It's been seconded. Are there any concerns for me sending a letter of support? See, now I'd like to, Councillor Miller. It's just, um, I, I think one has to be wary of what one says at a time like this, but um, exploring that, um, the, the, the person that sent you this um, hasn't been fantastic with her correspondence, that, f from my perspective anyways, I, I think I can say that uh, safely, and, and a few others. So, um, but I, I guess if it's coming from you, I, I, I don't have an issue with it. But I think if it did come from us, I would have a, I, I'd have to say more about it. But I'll, I'll leave it at that because I don't want to put my foot in my mouth either. But Well, I, I don't want to recommend something the council's not comfortable with. So I think we need to talk more about it or take it and put it in next, uh, next council. If you want to think about it or talk about it, if you've got concerns, we shouldn't, I shouldn't be recommending recommending something that you have concerns with. So let's pass on that, take it off the table, and we'll bring it back another time after we've discussed it. Councillor Chambers? There is a time uh, a situation there, May 16th is the only problem. I don't have a problem with offering support. Uh, it, it, you can circulate the letter and okay. I, I think we should deal with it. And, can we hear your concerns, Councilor Miller? Or do you not want to talk about it right now? Well, but again, I, I, gotta, I, think, I think one has to be wary of where one puts one foot. Um, but um, I just, I, I know um, there's been a, I've had a few complaints about the company themselves, uh, people reaching out to them and not hearing back. And that, that, that's, I guess, would be my, my major issue with, with these guys. Um, and I'm a little frustrated that they, they kind of put us in a bit of a tight timeline too for this. Um, I, I'll leave it at that, Mr. Mayor, but, but that's where, it, that, that's how I see things anyways. Councillor Pierce. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, the way I read this is it's, it's whether the, the correspondence is an issue or not. I'm not reading this letter as, hey, we gotta get better at correspondence. What I'm reading this letter is, hey, we wanna expand our services. Yes. So as far as I'm concerned, absolutely. Okay. Any other comments about the letter? I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor of support? Opposed? Carried. So I'll send my letter of support. Uh, the second thing for new business is a notice of motion brought forward by Councillor Garneau. And so we'll, we'll talk about that the next meeting. Everyone has a copy of it in front of them. It's actually a very interesting topic, and I think there'll be lots of conversation and Councillor Garneau brings it back next next council meeting. So please note that that's in front of us. Do you, do you want to introduce the topic of your motion? Sure, absolutely. And apologies for the late breaking notice of motion that will return in May to discuss substantively uh, whether to ask staff to put together some guidelines for scheduling meetings that fall out of our regularly scheduled activities. Uh, recognizing that uh, council is changing and many of us have additional commitments outside of this role. Uh, so just looking to have some discussion about that next month and hopefully move the topic forward. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Pierce? Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Do we have to wait till next council to discuss this? Yeah, I don't think we should discuss it today. It's, it's a, no, no, I, I'm not today, Mr. Mayor, but we have to wait till our next council meeting. You know, there's a couple other meetings prior to that. I'm just curious, would it fit into one of those or wait till council? Is there somewhere else it can be put to deal with it sooner? Th through your worship uh, to Councillor Pierce, traditionally the notices of motion are brought at the advisory committees and then they appear on the council agenda. Um, we could add it to an advisory committee and then for it to be ratified uh, at the May council meeting right. if Councillor Garneau would prefer that. Councillor Garneau? Yeah, I'm happy to take Councillor Pierce's recommendation and that of the clerks. Okay, let's do it. Councillor Pierce, or Ch Councillor Chambers. Uh, this gives me a great segue into 
uh, I'm, I believe in next month is when we start our new system and uh, of, of particularly the planning committee is going to be radically different in that we won't be making deliberations or recommendations to council. We'll be doing the public hearings, but we'll be meeting as council subsequently to deal with the recommendations from staff. So we're about to enter into a new uh, new system, I believe, next month. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, through your worship to Councillor Chambers, you will see the new schedule starting next week with policy committee um, meeting for its first of its quarterly cycle and, and planning and then council immediately following will commence the second week of May. Okay. So we know that's coming forward. Thank you for that. Uh, 13 on the agenda is to go in camera. Councillor Kyle, you're going to take us in camera. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Garneau that County of Brant Council convene in camera to discuss litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals and personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor to go in camera? Opposed? Carried? You're going to take five minutes.
Okay, we're going to move on. There's nothing that we have to... Um, no, there's nothing. We can go right to bylaws. 14, bylaws. Councillor Pierce, you have them. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My pleasure. Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Coleman, the bylaws 43-23 and 53-23 now be read a first time. All those in favor of the first reading of the bylaws. Where's Councillor? Did Councillor Bell leave? There he is. <laughs> or, 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 or we're waiting for your hand for the first reading of the bylaws, Councillor Bell. All those in favor? Opposed? Carry it. Second, second reading, please, Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Coleman, that the bylaws 4323 to 5323 be now read a second time and that all clauses and preambles be adopted. Thank you. Are there any questions to any of the bylaws? Seeing none, call the second vote. All those in favor of the second reading. And Councillor Pierce, if you could read them for the third time, please. Gladly, Mr. Mayor, through you, the by yeah. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Coleman, that bylaws 1323 to and 43.23 to 53.23 be read a third time, pass, sign, and exit. All those in favor of the third reading? Done. Takes us to the number 15 on the agenda, which is the next meeting, which is going to be according to this paper, Tuesday, May the 9th at 6 o'clock. Is there anything else for the betterment of the County of Grant? Seeking a motion to adjourn, Councillor.